What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Rasentoski here of Maze and Brew. Which are the five most important games for the Michigan Wolverines heading into 2021? This is going to vary from person to person. Highly debatable question. I expect many of you will be angry at the order in which I give these games. Okay, I'm going to give my order. Give my reasoning, let me get through it, and then I want to hear what you guys have to say, okay? So let's get right into it right away. Number five, Indiana. First Indiana, so it's going to be at the big house. Michigan had a 24-game win streak against the Hoosiers heading into the 2020 season. Indiana's longest streak against Michigan, two games. Obviously, the 38-21 loss last year to the Hoosiers was a big one. It broke that 24-game win streak. Another loss to them would give momentum to Indiana. Okay, there's already enough competition in the Midwest to compete with. Notre Dame, Ohio State are obviously some of the heavy hitters. Indiana's recruiting rankings, according to 24-7 Sports, is usually around the 50 to 60 range nationally since 2010. Closest they've gotten to that beyond that range is number 36 for the 2019 class. They're now up to number 23 nationally when you look at the 2022 class, right? So they're ascending in their recruiting efforts, and I think a lot of that are their recent successes, right? Makes sense. So another loss to them would give more fuel to the fire for that progression that they're having in the recruiting game, and that's more competition in recruiting, just something that you never want, right? They're number 17 heading into the preseason AP poll here, so they're not going to be a slouch this year. They bring back... Uh, Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback. They're they're a team that could ascend to that second tier that I think Michigan is kind of solidified on right now. Um, So it'd be a big win already because of where Indiana is expected to be this year. Add in the recruiting aspects I talked about. I think they're worthy of the number five spot. Okay, moving on to number four, Washington. Big part of this choice is timing, right? This is the biggest game From a fan perspective, in the big house since November 30th, 2019, right? That game against Ohio State did not end well. But factoring in the importance of winning the fans, okay? After a COVID year, ticket sales appear to be down. Um, Nothing will get the fans back on board with the Michigan with Jim Harbaugh overall faster than a huge win over a top 20 team in week number two, right? It's going to be a maze out at the big house night game. Um, it's going to be something that will really attract fans and be the first big showcase back in a full stadium. So given it's not a Big Ten game, right, that's why it's number four and now a little bit higher on this list, it is early in the season as well. So a loss here has little effect on any championship hopes for the season, however slim they may be right now, right? You can kind of take that loss and still get to a Big Ten championship, get to a playoff if you can rattle off some wins after that. So there's a lot to gain from this from a fan perspective, winning over the fans for Jim Harbaugh's status at Michigan. There's a lot to gain from this despite not having a lot to lose. Um, and, and I get it, right? Fans are understandably tenuous about Harbaugh and the program overall. This would shut that up um, pretty quickly in the season in week two. So that's why they're the number four spot. Okay, moving on to number three at Penn State. Quick quiz for you heading into this one. When's the last time Michigan beat a ranked team on the road? Okay, it's actually not that long in the past. 2020, last year, at number 21, Minnesota, to open up the season. Okay, now that seems false, right? Since it was week one, Minnesota was obviously higher ranked than they should have been. Looking at the rest of their season, they were not a great team. If you go back further beyond that, 2018 Week 8 against number 24 Michigan State in East Lansing. That was the DPJ catch with the Paul Bunyan pose. 21-7 to was the final score there. If you want to get real sad and you're trying to find the last time Michigan beat a top 20 opponent on the road, you have to go all the way back to 2006 where Michigan beat number 2 Notre Dame in South Bend. That's when current Michigan running back coach Mike Hart was on the team and I was 14 years old. Whew. Okay. So winning on the road is not something that Michigan's done in the near future or really in the past 15 plus years, right? So besides that, what are some other reasons that I put it this high on my list? Okay. Number one, end of the season, right? You're getting towards the end of the season. There's only two more games before you're at the end of the regular season, at least. If there are any hopes for postseason goals, that's going to be a huge game. Big last away game on the schedule. 
Number two is recruiting. Again, kind of similar with Indiana. Penn State is a team that Michigan's been relatively even with in the in the Harbaugh era, three and three. If you look at since Harbaugh is coach of Michigan, it, it it's it, it's seemingly a second tier with Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin. You could put there as well. Obviously, Ohio State's in that first tier. Another win would help give the edge for Michigan over the Nittany Lions in that regard. And Penn State's a team that's recruited the Mitten State extremely well, especially looking at 2021 class. And they they recruit Michigan harder than just about any other out of state Big Ten program. So a win would help solidify that Michigan's place over them in the Big Ten overall. So real quick here before we get to number two, shout out to these individuals who are members of the Mason Brew channel: Don, Sean, Noah Schroeder, Dylan Gurk, Alex Fuller, Aaron Bryant, Andrew Decker, Sam Lee, Terry Pender, Kino Bear, and Logan Evans. Thank you all for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. If anyone's interested. In getting shout outs, early access, exclusive live streams, consider becoming a member. Head over to the channel. There should be a join button uh, to provide different options of membership there. If you can't, I totally understand, but if you can, I appreciate you. All right, let's head over to number two here. Number two, OSU. Okay, this is a home game this year. Some fans would put this at number one. I could understand that, but OSU has been firmly in the Alabama tier, right? As one of the top echelon consistent uh, programs over the past two decades, really. No one in their right mind would expect a team to be competitive with them year in, year out, okay? I just think that's kind of a ridiculous thing to have an expectation for Michigan. I don't honestly think this is the year that Michigan can beat them, okay? I just don't. 2016 and 2018, if you ask me that, I'll have a different answer. I think those were years where it was an expectation to at least be competitive, if not beat Ohio State in those years, obviously that didn't happen. Let me think the 2017 game uh, was there as well, right? You have O'Corn at court quarterback. Obviously, it didn't end very well, but uh, the talent gap is still there. Okay, it's it's unrealistic to expect it this year. I'm not saying that to be a Debbie Downer. I just don't think it's reasonable. Now, it's still number two on this list, and not number one, because Michigan needs to show something. Going back to that 2017 year, I think this is kind of a similar year in terms of the roster where it's at, it's a little young, need to prove themselves at some positions. It wasn't a team that was going to win championships in 2017, and I think that's what we're, we'll get this year as well. But the game plan in 2017 was excellent. Execution was pretty high despite that talent gap. And that's what we need to see in 2021. Looking at the 2018, 2019 games, that seemingly wasn't there. It was four years ago since the last time it felt that Michigan kind of had a coaching and schematic advantage in the game. And uh, despite me not thinking this is the year to finally upend OSU, showing improvement, more competent game planning, cleaner execution overall, I think will go a long way. And convincing me that Michigan is on the right track with this revamped staff, that they're correcting the issues that have plagued them the past few years. And I think that's a that's a reasonable take to have. But some people might disagree with that. Moving on to number one here at Michigan State. Okay, last year's loss against the Spartans was the worst loss in Harbaugh's tenure at Michigan. I don't even think it's close. And yes, that's considering the recent losses to the Buckeyes, okay? Michigan State, just to set paint the picture here, Michigan State had lost their best football coach ever in Mark D'Antonio. They had to hire a coach extremely late in the cycle when D'Antonio left that program. They hired a coach with one year, one year of head coaching experience. They hired Mel Tucker after he had already turned down the initial offer, after Michigan State exhausted all other coaching options. They came back to Tucker with a ludicrous offer and brought him in during a time where visits were not allowed, relationships were almost impossible to grow, and a global pandemic really stunted the team's development and your recruiting development with a new staff. I mention all of this to say it was poised so extremely well to put Michigan State to bed. Michigan wins that game. MSU is 1-6 coming out of a pandemic. What do you sell as the head coach of that program? You have nothing for a recruiting advantage to pitch to recruits over almost any program. Winning that game for Michigan would have put out the light. There would not be a light of hope for Michigan State. They have that flicker of hope. That flicker of hope can go a long way in convincing recruits that they're doing something right. And when it comes to in-state recruiting, that's a big deal. 
So for 2021, it's an absolute must win. Michigan State got some talent through the portal. There's still a lot of questions for them. Michigan does still have a talent advantage, in my opinion. You cannot lose to Tucker in his first two years he's at Michigan State. It'd be really inexcusable, and I truly don't think it's something that Harbaugh could overcome. Okay, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight, we talk this list. Okay, come hang out here on the channel and we'll talk and you guys can yell at me. Okay, what are your guys' thoughts? Leave a comment for your ordering of the list. I'm really curious to see how different it is to mine. Again, shout out to members. Like and subscribe to this video if you have not already. Otherwise, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Stay safe out there and as always, go blue.